Com. Okay, so yeah, we just wanted to have like a meet and greet and get to know some Paradise Packers, uh, answer any questions that you might have around getting started with your roaming income or your location independent lifestyle um, and whether house sitting is going to be part of your mix at all because uh, as we mentioned in the email as well we are uh, known as the house sitting queens dubbed by Jason and Travis as that um, <laughs> and God, godmothers I think they said godmothers or something yeah I don't know whatever it is but yeah we have been house sitting full-time for a long time now and uh, we were involved with the paradise pack uh, in its first year and have had four out of the five years of um, being included. Hi, Diana. Hi, Diana. And, yeah, so uh, we can definitely talk anything about housing if anyone wants to know about that. And our roaming income journey has definitely been a lot slower, I guess, than some of the contributors to the Paradise Pack. Uh, but I, I dare say that's more than anything being contributed to that we didn't have anything to start with. Uh, so when you actually start from absolute ground zero, um, you know, it's not like you can sort of invest a lot up front in whether it be education or the tools that you need or what have you. So, yeah. Or getting help. Yeah. So it's, uh, um, it's been a, a longer, slower journey for us because we've had to try things out as we go uh, and, and learn everything, learn along the way. <laughs> um, but I guess more than anything, it's kind of like almost within a blink of an eye, uh, five years, we're now at five and a half years of actually living a completely nomadic, minimalistic life and uh, couldn't go back, to be honest. Just couldn't go back have it any other way. <laughs> <laughs> and that's each to their own. Everybody is different. So um, I don't know. Let us know. Uh, uh, Diana, you were here with us last time. Look at you at work. Are you or at home? <laughs> you at home or? Hi. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I'm at home. Ah, uh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Mera, are you looking at being location independent or are you, you know, fixed in Norway for a uh, while? To be honest, right now, I'm fixed. See? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so right now, I'm fixed. <laughs> but it's like going to be fixed in a month because the baby is due in a month, in August. Uh, but before that, I work as a freelancer, as a translator, when my other children born. But uh, it wasn't uh, earning me enough money. And before my children born, I was everywhere. I'd never been in America and I want to go to Brazil um, and uh, South America. But other than that, I was all around the world. And then I have my two daughters and now I don't travel anymore because I was like, oh, they have to go to school and things like that. So I was thinking, yes, but it's, they learn more if we travel. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So, do you I'm follow like, any? Yeah. Do, you, do you follow any of the family bloggers? Because there's a number of family bloggers out there that travel. Uh, I didn't know about them before the Paradise Park. Okay. Oh, good. Cool. Yeah, yeah. We've um, we've met quite a few of them, and well, in contact with quite a few of them, and they're amazing. Like, there's actually a family that live here, not far from us, about 20 minutes away, and we met them a number of times overseas with their young kids at the, that stage. They were young, they were sort of teenage. Um, oh, pre-teenage. Pre-teenage. But uh, yeah, it was amazing to see their growth over 18 months and seeing them at different times as they were traveling the world. And it was like, wow, you just can't beat that, you know, and school would never give you that. Yeah. Um, it's just amazing. Well, they originally decided to take the three kids, three of their five kids, two were at, um, old enough to be at home, but three of their five kids out of school to start traveling because the youngest one was struggling at school. And when they came back after nearly two years of travel, um, he's actually really started to blossom at school. He's, he's found his own way. He's, you know, doing a lot more music, a lot more creative stuff. And it was really an amazing story, really amazing to see. So, and of course you guys have got access to um, Kaz Makepeace's mindset stuff and, you know, Car Carolyn Makepeace and Craig, they've got, one of the biggest family blogs, Why Travel Blog, and you know, seeing their two girls grow up uh, through travel because they were quite young when they started as well. So it's quite inspirational, and it's like if you if you feel to do it, and at least you've got that freelancing kind of background already, like knowing what it's like to work as a, a freelancer. Um, and I guess it's about learning the skills and 
how to either diversify income, have multiple income streams, um, mm -hmm. or be able to increase what you're doing. Um, if, if anyone has started through the Roaming Income Club, um, we do talk a lot about the idea of having an active income, leveraged income, uh, and then eventually maybe having some kind of residual income as well. And we're big advocates for that because, you know, while we house it, we do work a lot um, and we enjoy it, but we like to be able to have the freedom of not having to work if we don't want to. So that's where it's like you can drop off your active income a little bit uh, if you've got some kind of income stream that's coming in from work that you did you know, once or that you don't have to do a lot of work for to keep an income coming in. So um, that's kind of the focus of the Roaming Income Club and the idea was to kind of separate out uh, who's doing what so you can see what resonates with you, what, what you feel could be something you could explore further. Uh, we actually have another interview coming soon into the Roaming Income Club. Um, one of our best affiliates. So with our courses, we have the House City Academy, Set Up to Stand Out Kit, Roaming Income Club, and we offer 40% affiliate commission on all of our programs and products. And this one travel blogger, um, has got an SEO rank, so a search engine optimized uh, blog post that's ranked under the term international house sitting. And she gets a, a good few sales every, each and every month from work that she did over a year ago. So she did the work once, she wrote up the blog post. I think there's been one time since that she made a bit of a, an update to it. And pretty much like clockwork, she makes sales every month. So that is the ultimate definition of, you know, a truly leveraged income. And that one even borders on, you know, to a degree, passive, a, yeah. a passive residual income because yeah. she's really not doing a lot for that money coming into her. So we've got that interview coming up. I've just been, she, being summer, she's been out hiking and doing all sorts of fun things in the States. Uh, so we're catching up with her in the next week or two. So that interview will be added into the club. Um, that'll be a good one because what I'm wanting to ask her is as a travel blogger and the journey that she's taken, I'm trying to get some metrics. So if everybody has actually gone through our four part video training series, we, we talked a lot, may have been a bit boring at some times, talking a lot about the numbers that it takes, like how many people need to see what it is that you're offering in order for them to buy what it is you're offering. Um, that's called conversion. So I wanted to get off her, you know, how many visitors to her blog was she getting each and every month? for her to earn $500 a month and then $1,000 a month. So if we can have those two metrics leading along the way, then I think that'll help uh, everybody have a bit of a goalpost because if you decide to blog while you're doing what you're doing, uh, blogging itself is always a really good um, external kind of, I guess it's a traffic source more than anything. It's a traffic source for whatever it is you're doing. Yeah, it's redefining um, what your blog actually is. Because a lot yeah. of people, I guess, go into blogging. We hear it's a lot in the travel spaces. Uh, I'm on the road now and I'm house sitting or I'm just traveling and I think I'll start a blog. Um, and usually they start for friends and family to notice so friends and family know where they are and stuff. And then they get a little bit of traction. Some people, other people start to read their blog posts. And then they have the idea of, I think I'll go and monetize it now and well, I, I'll earn my living from it. And it's sort of like, how are you going to earn your living from it? Like, what exactly are you going to do? Like having a couple of banners down the side uh, these days on a blog really doesn't sort of cut it in terms of creating an income. Um, we've just been so bombarded with banners and ads and Facebook and everything. Uh, that a lot of people are not buying from banners anymore. So you have to get more strategic when it comes to a blog these days to actually get traction exactly like Gemma is doing. So it will be an interesting um, uh, article, uh, interesting interview, interview yeah. sorry, to, um, to be with Gemma and actually see what she actually is doing. And it takes time. You know, blogging does take time. Now, I don't know how long her blog has actually been going for, but I would assume it's been going for quite a while for her to actually rank for various... Um, terms on you know on Google so when you type in international um, house sitting her blog post comes up so that would take some time to actually to do that so I think from the standpoint of you know our our mission uh, <coughs> and hopefully our message comes through clear with roaming income based off our direct experience is that 
wherever you need to earn an income with what you're doing. So there's kind of two scenarios. Um, if anyone's interested in becoming location independent uh, and having a travel experience, you know, Mary, you've already done a lot of your travels. You're now raising a family and perhaps it's about planning in a different light this time of not just being footloose and fancy free, but you've got three kids to be looking out for. And it's like, how am I going to plan my travels around, you know, raising my children at the same time? Is it just going to be for say one year just to experience it to see if it would work? Is it going to be unlimited? You know, it, everyone's <coughs> going to have a different path, but the, the two main paths would be um, save up money to start to have travel experiences and then start to create some sort of income that allows you to make a choice. Do I, I've now created enough income while I've been traveling um, to keep traveling or I've done my travel thing. I'm going to go home. I just want to do trips every now and again. Uh, but I like the idea of being able to work from home, work from anywhere, um, you know, be available to house sit or couch surf or even just travel in your own country. So there's kind of two ways around it. And for us, we made the decision to travel first, but we didn't have any savings to draw upon. Uh, so we had to make the money. And this purpose of saying, focus on something that's leveraged, um, kind of fits perfectly with blogging because blogging is not going to give you an income tomorrow. It just, it just can't. Uh, it takes time. And our suggestion would be, to not do what we did, which is we started a blog first and then because we <clears throat> couldn't make money from it straight away, we stopped blogging. And that's cost us dearly over the years because we um, put all of our focused energy into creating our education products as opposed to blogging about our lifestyle and about, you know, things we recommend, etc. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I think I've got a cat hair. <laughs> a <coughs> verbal. <coughs> Um, <clears throat> so by, it's kind of like if, if we had our time again, um, A, we would have started with a little bit more cash behind us. Uh, B, we would have been blogging on the side while building our information products because to sort of jump ahead five years now, um, if we had a blog that was five years old, it would be quite well established and it would be bringing in some income um, from work that we did, you know, three and four or five years ago. Yeah. So a suggestion would be to consider a blog, but don't consider a blog as being um, an income stream straight off the bat. It's just sort of something to consider using. And, and take over for a while while you're doing other stuff and it might be your active income as well. Um, and that way you can merge out of it, out of your active income into more leverage and passive stuff. So uh, an idea for you, Mira, would be, um, you know, having a, a pending birth through to including, like if you were to start a blog and if it was just literally based around your family where it was like, okay, I chose to buy the paradise pack. Why did I do that? You know, my, my, um, before I was a mother, I was this great traveler and I did all these things and I, and I was location independent and I was a freelancer and, and, you know, I didn't do everything right. I didn't earn a lot of money, but I did these things. I now have two daughters and I literally am weighing up. Do I keep them in school? Do I take them out of school? I'm about to have another baby. You know, why did I do this and kind of explore all that because over time, as you blog your thoughts, as you blog your challenges, as you blog about being a parent who you know, and an expat as well, coming from another country, living in one of the most expensive countries in the world. Um, talking about all of that, just by telling those stories as you write, you will start to get a following. And the family blog, um, I guess, niche is quite small. And you will reach people and you will reach followers because everybody wants to hear about your thought processes. They want to see how you deal with your challenges or your ideas that you're coming up with. Um, so if you are a writer, if you do enjoy writing, um, they don't have to be big, long blog posts. Mm. It's kind of like even just short little Grabs. thoughts uh, to sort of say, here's where I'm at. So I think from a, a family blog perspective, it's kind of something that maybe you could use as a little creative project out on the side. Maybe don't expect it to make lots of money to start with because um, it won't but maybe just sort of create that, that habit of saying, right, once a week or so, I'm just going to do a little update on where I'm at right now. 
because over time, like imagine in five years' time that you've got this entire journal of your journey from having your third baby to wherever you end up being and it's like the journey along the way, it's going to be really inspiring for people to read that. Mm. How does that feel? And it's also good for my product because I'm originally a designer. I have three bachelor degrees as an engineer and I designed a car which is not existed. <laughs> but now it exists because I designed it. But before it wasn't existed. So it's maybe also good for them. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. To have this car. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think the whole idea of um that online journaling which is where blogging started and then of course yeah. over the years it turned into there's a lot of blogs that have been very market focused um and even to a degree some travel blogs you really have to question the authenticity of them because if that blogger is being sponsored by a travel <laughs> brand um they're actually being told you can't write anything bad about this place that you're visiting or that this hotel that you're staying at, because otherwise we won't pay you. Uh, So you kind of have to have your radar up a little bit around like what is deemed as authentic blogging. And I feel that there's, it's almost like there's this conscious shift coming back to Mm. where blogging started, which was pretty much online journaling. And some of the best blogs that are still out there today that have just millions and millions of followers are the ones like, um the the zen i think it's called zen living or the minimalistic living Mm -hmm. um even seth godin with his just he's just he's blogged every single day for something like 15 years and he's just blogging thoughts and you know all of those thoughts at one stage will be or and in his case has been expanded upon and turned into a book um it's those habits that have been created and I don't know. I think it's kind of nice. Like we're actually finally considering going back to blogging. Uh, you know, I used to teach people how to blog 10 years ago and I moved away from it because, you know, as masses catch up to things, I don't like to stick around too much, but uh, um, the, I, I feel like it's coming back and, and it's kind of quite uh, therapeutic for yourself as well to be able to blog your thoughts and, you know, you don't have to hit publish on every single post, but if you find the confidence to hit publish and just share your journey, because guaranteed there is at least one other person on this planet who will totally get the journey that you're going through and just resonate with it and go, thank you for writing these words. Um, You make me feel better about my own choices or my own thoughts or, you know, inspired to do this or that. So I don't know. I think that's probably one tip I would give, um, at least that was, that's something that you could do parallel while ever you're earning an income, um, whether it be like you, Diana, still at home with a job, maybe start a little blog on the side, just start kind of, you know, dabbling in that. It doesn't need to go anywhere at this stage. It's just like get into the, the habit of doing it. And then as you decide, you know, what is going to be my location independent income or am I going to freelance or consult or am I going to do something else that can lead into um, a a leveraged income? Like a friend was just telling me this morning that off her blog, um, she's going to start providing drop drop shipping goods, like physical goods. Um, (coughs) Well, she's she's into manifesting and um, a lot of like dream catchers and she designs a lot of things like that. So she's going to start actually getting those products developed and made, whether it be locally or in China and then actually shipping them. Mm. Um, So there's all kinds of things. Uh, One of the paradise packers from last year, um, she uh, created a towel, like being a traveler. She was like, I want to be able to have a towel that has like a pocket on it, a waterproof pocket. So that if I'm at the beach, I can put my keys and my cards and phone and stuff into it. So she designed it. She got it all, you know, sorted out through um, China and, uh, now has an Amazon store selling this towel. That interview is um, actually in the room. Yeah, it is. I'm just moving the, the light here. <laughs> the sun's moving. Weird sunshine on my face. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we put that interview into the Remy Inca. It was really interesting to talk to her about physical products. I think physical products have come into their own now. It's a lot easier than it used to be. I think before it was always, you know, you have to be a manufacturer and you have to be a big company and all this sort of stuff. But, you know, the everyday person now is getting into the physical products on Amazon and 
um, which is called drop shipping, where it can actually be produced yeah. um, internationally and using a store like Amazon or Shopify, yeah. um, AliExpress, yes, Alibaba's, Etsy. different things where it's actually made elsewhere. You're like the middleman marketing it and taking the payment and it gets delivered straight from manufacturer to um, the, the buyer. Right. Uh, so, yeah, monetizing blogs is is uh, lots of ways like and and then there's even just straight up without blogging um you know those stores like one of the other interviews we have is with uh, a friend of ours who has an amazon store and he started traveling with with his two little kids as oh. well um i think their youngest one was still a baby when they hit yeah, the road and yeah we were really really surprised and I, I guess now it makes sense like they left sydney and sydney is pretty much like Norway. It's pretty expensive to live. Um, and they left Sydney and we knew that he'd only been doing his Amazon store for maybe a year before they left. And he was a chiropractor before that. Um, so we kind of didn't expect it to have such a big income. Uh, but if you watch us, watch our reaction when we ask him, okay, how much are you actually earning from your Amazon store with one product? It's just one <laughs> tool type of DIY product. He's like, uh, it's about eight thousand dollars. We're like, what? <laughs> eight thousand dollars a month from one product. That's incredible. I mean he's gotta take out the the costing of actually buying that product and stuff. So there's cost of goods and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, I was like, wow, actually that's so much more than I expected. <laughs> And, doing really well and because traveling with with his family and they did a little bit of house sitting a little bit of um workaways and you know just staying in places as well and um yeah they could more than afford to to do that in fact he was worried about going back to sydney because he said i have to set up another store just so i can afford to live in sydney <laughs> it's more expensive it's cheaper to travel <laughs> definitely cheaper to travel absolutely hi camille hello camille um, and Nadine, have you got, you're unmuted, are you able to speak? Yes. Oh, good. Excellent. So you haven't got your I've video. just been listening. Oh, good. That's okay. Whereabouts are you coming from? I'm from uh, Raleigh, North Carolina in the States. Yep. Cool. Very cool. Yes. cool. Are you um, location independent now? Are you, you now I have a, I'm a software engineer, um, but I'm going to retire in two years. So Very nice. I'm, so I'm, uh, I'm gonna, I call it retirement, but you're uh, like a year to travel the world. A gap year is really what I need. I don't gap year. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I want to pay off my house first and then take the gap year. So that was like, but um, I want to do it like inexpensively. So I'm more interested in the house sitting part and how to travel the world inexpensively. So yeah, there you go. Yep. Nice way to go. All right, well, the biggest tip for the house sitting side of things is um, to have a, have a look on websites like uh, housesitsearch.com um, or there's also another one, um, House Sitting World, where you can actually put in requests. But on house, housesitsearch.com, if you could just find uh, a house sit that's in within a reasonable distance from where you live and that perhaps you could help out a homeowner with, whether it's a weekend or a week, somewhere in between, and just start getting some references. Like if you can do some local house sits uh, where possible before you're planning on traveling, it's like, again, that preparation before you're about to, to hit the road, uh, get some references under your belt, um, be a member of one of the platforms so that you can put your references on there as well. And yeah, it's, it's just a case of kind of, you know, having the direct experience we yeah. uh we subscribe to the idea that you never really know something unless you have a direct experience so it's a little bit like the blogging thing as well you know give it a go start the blogging see if it feels right like you either hate writing like i do um mm -hmm. so find another way to to you know express what your thoughts are um or if you love writing just start writing but put it in learn the blogging format um, and get used to do that so with house sitting you know, not everybody can stand in a completely new kitchen and feel comfortable opening up the fridge, using mm. the pots and pans, using the crockery and cutlery without like freaking out. Am I going to break it? Am I going to do this? I don't feel comfortable. Blah, blah. And, you know, sometimes it literally is just a case of stepping into that role and going, 
is it for me or not? Uh-huh. Um, and we've personally never had a problem with it at all. Like it's... No, I think you're either of that way, you're inclined that way or you're not. Um, some people, <clears throat> they've gone house sitting and gone, whoa, this is not for me at all. <laughs> like, first experience, it's like, this is just not me. I felt really weirded out by, you know, yeah, opening somebody's fridge, sleeping, sleeping in somebody's bed, bed. Yeah. Um, just that sort of stuff. So you have to be comfortable in other people's spaces like that. Um, obviously, the person's not there, but just taking over somebody else's life because that, that's pretty much what you're doing in house sitting. So it's not a free, um, free vacation. Uh, you do actually have to do some work for it. It's that you know, sort of that fair exchange of services. Uh, so you're getting free accommodation, but you have to look after pets generally. Um, so you have to keep that in mind that you have a pet routine that you have to follow. And you know, looking after the house, you've got to you know make sure the house is clean and you know mow lawns and maybe gardens or pool perhaps. So it just depends. But <clears throat> the good thing about house sitting is that there's such a wide variety of house sits that you can really start to choose what type of sits you want to take on. So you know, some people really specialise only in cats. Um, they don't like walking dogs. They're not really into dogs. Uh, they've never had them before, so they've gone. I'm just a cat sitter. So it's like, cool, like there's plenty of cat sits out there. We've got one right now. So I noticed they've been in the background. Yeah, yeah crazy. <laughs> They're trying to get outside. But it's really cold outside. There's one sitting up in one of the little porthole windows up there. Funny. The well, there was one on the table in back of you a while before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying to get our attention. They keep wandering around. <laughs> they're um, beautiful too they're so cool oh yeah they do yeah, look you can really pick and choose what type of house sits you want to do and it's whether you want to do it locally um and stay within uh, the u.s or you want to travel with it as well and you know we started jody had actually done one in sydney and we hadn't even tweaked at that point this was years and years ago before we went overseas didn't even tweak that oh my god maybe we could use house sitting to travel the world <laughs> and it wasn't till you know years later we where everything sort of fell apart for us in Dubai and we lost everything and we went, wow, we've got a choice now. We either go back home to Australia and get a job and live with mum and dad and all that sort of stuff or we get on the road and we start travelling like we really want to do. And that and house sitting enabled that. So house sitting was actually, for us, it wasn't even a, a, a bit all about travel. It was actually about survival at that mm-hmm. point. Um, to not have rent and not have to pay utilities and really cut our costs down to a point that we could actually survive and then get back on our feet. So that's how it started. And then we just went, oh, my God, what if we kept doing this? I wonder what would happen. And so we have. That's that's what's happened for the past five years. I, I think one of the reasons why... What is your like- average time of a house sit? <laughs> um, we pretty much have averaged through the whole five and a half years of doing this now. Um, our average time would be about uh, seven or eight weeks. So we rarely take short house. Um, the only times that it, I could count, you know, maybe on two or three fingers, like the number of times we've taken something less than a month. Um, and they've either been to help out a homeowner, like we were in New York one time um, and we could stay with Matt's brother in New York, uh, but we saw this listing come up and it was for within just a few days. Now, for a homeowner to find a house at a really, really short notice like that is really difficult. They generally would have to you know, find a paid sitter, um, which you can absolutely do too. You, you can look at sites like Rover um, and you know, maybe even take in dogs or whatever else into your home or just do short paid house sits around where you are that all those references add up but for us we saw this and we just kind of instantly felt empathy for the homeowner going wow I don't know what the story is whether they've had somebody cancel on them or whether they just you know they have like a job that just comes up and says oh I have to go so we just reached out and said look we're in the area we can help out if you need us to and they answered back straight away um and we went over there and it was like, this is a really cool house here. We ended up living in the same street that the mayor of New York lived in and there's <laughs> detail outside. Two, two and, and it was really cool. And actually, that girl, Mira, she was um, Hungarian and her husband was from Mauritius and they worked for, oh, she worked for the UN. And the two dogs were originally rescue dogs that they had taken off the streets in Rome. And when we read that, we're like, is that like... Rome, New York, or Rome, Italy. They're like, no, Italy. no, they've come from Italy and they live <laughs> in Brooklyn now. And we're like, this is so cool. <laughs> so the short house sits like that um, 
one time we needed a gap fill as well. Uh, we, we were flying from Central America to South America and it's actually really expensive to go from Central America to South America. It was cheaper to fly back to the States and then down. Um, and, <laughs> that um, makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So we went, we went from Costa Rica to uh, Fort Lauderdale and literally within a few days after booking that flight, and we were sort of like, oh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll just book the outward flight or we'll find a place to stay, Airbnb or something. And literally within days, um, this house, it comes up 10 days, South Beach, Miami, uh, over Thanksgiving. And we're like, that sounds oh, really good. Nice. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> Now I've been to Miami for 10 days on 12th Avenue, right at the end of like the, the, the street that had just like the best restaurants and, and cabaret shows and everything. It was so cool. Um, and it was a gap filler. And then we got down to Peru, you know, for a lot less as well because we flew back, flown back into the States. But our sweet spot um, is between two and three months. Um, we're on a four, four and a half month long house sit right now. And it's serving its purpose uh, because we have... And that sister is only a couple of hours away and we have friends half an hour away. So it's kind of like we're getting a lot of work done too. Yeah. So I think it depends <laughs> on sort of what your schedule is. Like we work online, so it's yeah. nice for us to settle in. If it's too short, the house sit, then we find that we're too disruptive with our work. Um, and if it's too long, we get too bored. Uh, so we really, I think you find that sweet spot again, you've got to have the direct experience to sort of know like, yeah okay six weeks um two months whatever after that it's too long um shorter than that is too short so that's our sweet spot but everybody will be different and if you're working it'll be different again but house sits vary so much they go from you know a weekend um all the way through to a year or more um yeah, sometimes maybe. you will find sits where people have to travel internationally for a year for a contract or whatever and they just want to get house sitters in because they've got pets and all that sort of stuff so it really does depend yeah, I can, can I have a question? Yeah. Is it house sitting without animals? Or always yeah. have cats and dogs? Not always. Um, probably about 80%, we would estimate, have, have pets. Because um, you've got to think about the homeowner. The main reason that they would get somebody in to house sit is because of their pet. So if they're going away for a long period of time and they don't have pets, generally they probably rent their house out um, or Airbnb it. But if you've got pets, it's very hard to do that. So that's when you would have to get a house sitter in instead. Um, so yeah, generally, um, other times it be, might be for security. So you might find in some of the Central and South American countries that they will get people in to, for security reasons in Canada. <clears throat> you'll find sits up there where not necessarily, they won't necessarily have pets but they can't um, leave the house empty for insurance purposes. So if anything goes wrong, particularly in winter, where the pipes freeze and things burst and all that sort of stuff, they actually have to have somebody in the house living um, at all times. So that's so it just depends on the reasoning behind it. But yeah, generally, um, most of them will have pets. And you'll find that if, uh, if there is a house sit with no pets, um, and it's a longer one, and, and there are quite a few longer ones as well, uh, that they will ask you to contribute to the bills, to, to the utilities. So you would be, um, you know, you'd have to negotiate with the homeowner. It's kind of like a rent-free but pay your own way. Um, and I think the unwritten rule is if the house it is longer than three months, then there's a chance possibly be open to negotiating whether you need to contribute to electricity or water or gas or whatever it may be. Um, but yeah, we, you do see them. And in that website, uh, house you can actually uh, select filters. So you can filter to, to show the ones without pets and it's worthwhile doing that. Don't put any dates in, just see how many show up without the pets in comparison. Now, that particular search tool, it doesn't have all of the house sitting platforms. It probably has about half of them, but that's enough to at least get a good idea to say, well, yeah. I mean, our, our assessment has generally been about 20% of all the house sit listings that come up um, might have no pets. Like it's sort of 
around about that. It's, but generally speaking, 80% of them have pets. Um, and, and that's the part that we love personally. But just going back to what Nat was talking about before with regards to um, feeling comfortable in somebody else's house, a mindset aspect that really has worked for us is when you take on the idea that you are a steward, um, you're a, a steward of somebody else's possessions and property. And it's kind of like our, our motto has always been that no footprints type of um, approach. So if somebody is trusting you to take over their life for two weeks, mm. two months, whatever it may be, we, we go in with the mindset that um, we are here to use and experience everything that these people own and have um, and therefore we're stewards of it therefore we're going to look after it um, as if it's our own and you know when we leave we would like for them to feel that we were never there that their, their home and their life just continued whether we were there or not um, so that's just kind of a bit of a mindset thing of it but for us uh, even though we started house sitting completely out of survival mode um, I think we were probably in a, a such deep level of gratitude you know, every, as each month went by. Um, so we started to see deeper and deeper levels of the benefits of house sitting. And that's why we put together our course, the House Sitting Academy. Um, we were the first uh, house sitters to bring together house sitters in a Facebook group. Um, so the House Sitting World Facebook group, we started, it was the very, very first group. And we were answering the questions over and over, like, how do I get started? What should I do? What happens on this situation? What happens on, you know, if this goes wrong or if that happens or how do you navigate? How do you keep lining up how sits back to back? Because that's what we were doing. Um, so we put it all together into a course. So to sort of come back over out of house sitting into our roaming income, um, that was almost the perfect way for us to leverage our time because we were answering that question mm day in, day out in this Facebook group. And we're like, well, instead of answering this question day in, day out, why don't we actually put it into a course and then say, all the answers are in this course, <laughs> just go and invest in it. Um, and now the House of the Academy is nearly four years old. It's only a few weeks off being four years old and it's grown into so much more. We actually have weekly mentoring sessions uh, with all of our members. It's a lifetime membership. Uh, we have an inner circle referral network. Um, the actual entire course has been um, helping people even experience it as a found benefits out of it because we cover every single thing of the house sitting journey and yeah we've just added so much more of these it's been really cool it's been fun yeah i think that's the thing with um that sort of thing you know we create a product like that i think that's a classic example of a leveraged income where you could be answering the same question over and over again to people <laughs> or you could create it into a course, whether it be a big course uh, like the Academy is, or a small course, uh, it could be just a $7 product, um, where you actually leverage your time that, that way and, re and record your answer. Um, and you just keep selling that, like it's, it can really make a nice tidy income, even on small, small products that sell for $7 or $20, $29 or something like that, you know, you get enough traffic through and particularly if you're blogging and things like that and they start to get SEO ranked and then you've got Facebook ads and things like that, which you really can't go past these days in terms of traffic. Um, you can make a pretty decent income and it doesn't cost a lot to travel the world. I think that's probably more the point in our story is that we didn't have a lot to start off with anyway. So we had to cut our costs right down and we managed to do that. And some people have actually done even better than us where, you know, we, it would have cost us, you know, about 16,000 us dollars to actually just rent a place. And that wouldn't matter whether it was in Sydney or Brisbane or Dubai, where we were most, most places, you know, you're going to be charging about $300 a month in rent week, <laughs> a week, sorry, week. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, on average, you know, you're, you're spending that sort of money just, just to live. That's without all utilities and all the transport costs and all the bits and pieces you've got to add on top of that. We don't have any of that stuff anymore. So it's really does cut our costs. Like we're down to probably a third or even less of yeah, what for, it costs to live in a fixed location. For us, we replace the idea of, you know, rent and utilities mm. with the cost of our flights to get to places. So every year for the past five years, we've averaged about two and a half thousand dollars each. I think it was 2,600 or something each. Um, so add that together, 
roughly $5,000. <clears> if we lived in a fixed location, we're looking at $15,000 plus. So it's a third of um, life living in one place renting. And we've had 95% free accommodation in five and a half years uh, with house sitting. So we pretty much are always back house back. sitting. Yeah. Uh, last year, we had our first uh, cancellation that didn't get filled. And it was a cancellation that came in only a few days before we were due to go to a five week long house sit. We were spewing too, because it was going to be right on the beach in Mazatlan in Mexico. And <laughs> can't wait to be there. It would have been awesome. It's a two bedroom apartment right on the beach, one dog. It's going to be beautiful. And unfortunately, the, the homeowners, um, they had this awesome trip planned to Italy, all these tours, all these things. And his doctor uh, told him that he couldn't travel because his heart condition had played up. So they had to cancel everything. Uh, so we looked around, we tried to fill it in, and we ended up going, look, let's just go back to the, the city we were in in Mexico, in Guanajuato. We have some friends there. And we got a rental property uh, for $500 a month, weekly servicing, you know, we, our place was cleaned for us. We had no pets to look after. We thought we were on our nice first change. house sitting <laughs> You didn't have to do anything for two months. Lovely. <laughs> you were on You're vacation. Right. <laughs> yeah, it was a nice break. <laughs> so it was a nice experience to, to see something like that. But then the irony was uh, coming back to Australia, um, we'd said yes to going to my cousin's... We said yes to going to my cousin's uh, destination wedding in the Cook Islands in the South Pacific. And considering that a lot of people in Australia and New Zealand take a one or two week vacation to the Cook Islands, to Fiji, to Vanuatu. And for us to stay in, I think it was only like a three and a half or, yeah, I think it was three and a half star, you know, beach uh, resort. Um, it was $1,200 for one week. And we just had two months in Mexico for a thousand dollars. So we're going, if this is how people normally travel, like when they take their vacation, they spend $1,200 for a week, they go home, they, they work up to save for the next vacation. <laughs> we're like, wow, more appreciation for our life, like how we're living. <laughs> this is amazing. And even if you don't house it all the time, there are places that are just super cheap to, to rent and, mm, um, you know, there are. And, and dive into that slow travel kind of mindset. Um, that's what works for us as well. So you might need longer than a year, Nadine. Might be a longer. <laughs> I'll guarantee you'll get out there and after a year uh, you'll go. I say uh, a year, I but... <laughs> Same. Well, I say retirement, and then everyone's like, "You'll be so bored," and I'm like, "Ah." <laughs> but well, that's yeah. that's my start a year. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like I went on a very long. Well, the longest trip I've ever taken was three weeks, and that was in February. And I thought this is either gonna make me want more, keep me home, and it makes me want more. So. <laughs> Yeah, you won't just last a year. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and if I do it right, then That's yeah. It. I mean, there's like lots of places you can live cheap, especially in Southeast Asia. Yep, I've, yep. I've been reading about it and I'm like, yeah, you know, you can rent a Bali, uh, an apartment in Bali for like $400 a month. Yep. Yeah, we've got a friend there right now doing yeah. that. Doing yeah, that. and I'm like, you know, I, if I live off of like, if I if I could just do a thousand dollars a month, I can live off my savings for the next, until I need to social security. So I was like, yeah. So every time I was like, at my, they had layoffs at my job. I'm like, I'll go, and they said no. <laughs> <laughs> I volunteered to get laid off, and they said no. So <laughs> gotta stick it out. <laughs> yeah. Well, now it's like saving mode. Try to put as much into the the savings accounts, and then. Then I won't have to worry about money for a while after I retire. Well, what yeah. I wanted to bring up was there's um, a couple that are members of the House City Academy uh, who, funny, funny to say about the adult gap year, their first experience to try before they buy, see if they wanted to travel or not, was they took one year and uh, then they decided, yep, okay, let's go home. We're going to sell our house. We're going to cut down on everything. You know, mm -hmm. they wanted to hit the road. So they've been house sitting uh, now for at least a couple of years. And because they were fully self-sufficient early retirees, I mean, they're only in their 
mid fifties. Um, so they're not on any social security or pension or anything as yet either, but they, they, you know, uh, um, self-sufficient. And when we were speaking to them, because um, we actually have set up our house city Academy and Remy, as I said, with the, with the affiliate commission, we said to them, oh, would you like your affiliate link? Um, and what's coming into the house city Academy is a, an updated version of how to actually be an affiliate. Because here's what happens when you start, or even if you start thinking about this sort of lifestyle, people ask you questions. Now, if we literally had a dollar for every person who asked us, you know, oh my God, you're house sitting. How do I get into that? Or how do you do that? Or how do you line up the house sits? Or where do you find a blah, blah. Um, so these questions get asked all the time. So we said that to this couple and they're like, no, 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 we don't, we don't need to earn a roaming income. We don't need to, you know, have a location. We're fully self-sufficient. And we're like, look, just think about it. It took them about a month or two because um, they actually started a blog because of family. They just wanted to blog about where they were going, where they're experiencing so family could read it. And then they started noticing how many people were asking, your lifestyle is amazing. How do you do this? And they're like, well, Come and read on that we're, blog. we're a member of the house sitting Academy. And if you want to join it, you can come in. Now they've started making sales by not doing anything other than just, so what do they do with that money? I mean, if they're getting like $120 for a referral, they're like, Oh, that's a nice dinner out. You know, let's, let's go and splurge on massages this week. So they're kind of just going this little bit of extra money that comes in just from doing something that we would do anyway. Um, it, and we sort of look at it as that whole win-win is like, well, if you don't need the cash to travel, then who's going to say no to just a little bit of cash coming in, even if it is just for a, um, you know, a little splurge for yourself, mm. uh, you know, rather than having to live on a, a, a frugal budget or whatever all the time. Um, and even the members who are deemed as the, you know, the frugal stars, the frugal travellers, uh, they do all their frequent flyer points. They studied from Travis. Uh, they've got all their you know, card system happening. They get all their miles. They do all that stuff. And in between house sits, um, they use the miles for accommodation yes. and hotels. And they're doing their first international um, house sitting experience now, mixing it up with hotel miles and different things. And they pretty much spend next to nothing. Uh, but they've started well, these guys actually said that they don't like writing. So they've started vlogging. So they're doing video reports of where they're going. And same thing, they're just starting to bring in just a little bit of affiliate income. And again, it's kind of like, they don't need the money. You know, they, they retired early with a fully set up um, uh, income from what their savings are. And it's sort of like, again, Oh, well, if you get an extra 500, no it. <laughs> 500 bucks this month, like that's pretty cool. Like that'll just splurge on something. We'll have a nicer dinner or whatever. So well, there's some good ways to do that too. Yeah. Uh, to earn just you know, $500, $1,000 a month sort of thing. That just keeps you ticking over a bit more yeah. comfortably. Yeah. Um, there's heaps of ways to do that. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's more of like, instead of the one income from my salary, it'd be like incomes coming from different, like a small bit coming from different things. More yeah, but they don't have to be huge income. And I think that's one of the things we wanted to dispel the myth of in roaming income was, you know, a lot of online people talk about um, and they have their courses and stuff and they're talking, you know, a hundred thousand dollars a month or a million dollars a year. And so, and it's like, really, do people really need that sort of money? Like, what are you going to do with that for a start? And it's like, if you're a traveler, you're probably just minimalistic anyway. You probably just need a an extra thousand dollars or three thousand dollars a month like let's bring it back to reality um and that enables a really healthy travel lifestyle like we've not needed any more than that um and there's two of us and we've traveled the world and we've had an amazing experience like there could have been other things that we could have done along the way um had we've had a bit more money so we're working towards that but we're not talking you know millions and millions of dollars here so i think it's it really is bringing it back to reality and going, you know, like small amounts can actually make a difference. They add up after a while. And, you know, when you've had a blog post out there or something else that's been out there for a year and then suddenly you get a payment for it and it's like, oh, wow, that's really cool. Like, where did that come from? <laughs> totally suddenly, forgot about that one. <laughs> yeah, and money appears in your, in your account and you go, 
Yeah, that's great. Like, that's so awesome. So well, if, even, I don't know if any of you guys are part of the Location Indie um, membership, it's kind of like whatever your outlays are, what if that could be covered mm. by something? You know, it's like, okay, if there's, if there's 50 bucks a month to stay a member of the Location Indie, where could I earn 50 to to $100 a month so I'm not actually out of pocket for anything? Um, so it's, it's kind of like, your costs yeah, you. getting creative with stuff, uh, things that you have to pay. Like if you're going to leave a home, um, with, you know, bills that you need to pay, if you're not renting it out or anything, it's kind of like, okay, how could I cover those costs? Mm. So my savings are my actual savings. Um, yeah, the money's it's kind of like weighing it all up. And I think that's where the, the location indie and the paradise pack and, you know, obviously there's heaps and heaps of ideas that can come from it um and one of the reasons why we kind of wanted to do this session we're doing another one again um in our events it's like about 11 hours or something from now 10 hours from now try and meet in the world time zones is to hopefully you know help you with your ideas if anyone's got ideas so nadine thank you so much for asking about house sitting we definitely did want to talk mm. about that we've recorded this now so um everyone can watch it but um, i do have a, a kind of personal like finance question um yeah. Do you use like PayPal for your automatic payments coming in is, or something like that? Like you said, you know, you, you have like a blog post that gets money and suddenly this money appears in your account. Is it all through like a PayPal or something like Gen that? Generally, um, affiliate payments will come via PayPal. There are some affiliate payments like um, with Amazon, they'll pay directly to a bank account. Um, so you know, we don't get a lot of Amazon income, but every now and again, it'll show up saying, you're like, oh, here's $10.74 just deposited into your bank account. It's like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> but generally speaking, affiliate programs will be via PayPal. They'll just pay direct into your PayPal account. Yeah, I'm, I'm more of a logistics detail person. So I'm like, okay, how do I set up my finances? How do I do that stuff? So Yeah, yeah. depends on what you're doing. Like for our products, uh, we have Stripe. So mm -hmm. um, that pays direct to a bank account. That pays direct to our bank account. So yeah. it really depends on what you're doing as to where it will pay to. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, the, the whole lot of um, sort of online payment world thing now is very advanced. Um, it's interesting know, it's, when you become more nomadic. Yeah. Um, that's one thing that we've found is difficult uh, because the world hasn't caught up to people that don't have a home address. You know, we don't have a home address. We use Jody's mum and dad's. Um, <laughs> we don't live there. We're hardly anyone anyway, ever there. So it's, you know, different things where they need, for some reason, the world has sort of decided that you're not a person unless you have a physical address, which I guess is because of the online world and what has happened and what could potentially happen with people, you know, creating false identities and all these different things. So what that's meant is that you have to verify that address all the time. So it's fine for you because you've got a home. Um, it's been very difficult for us. That's one thing that we've had issues with when we're setting up new accounts or trying to get cards for this or and all very, for very legitimate purposes but we legitimately don't have a home address either so oh speaking of getting there speaking <laughs> of cards um have has any of you actually started on um travis's uh frequent fly boot camp yes no. i have yeah it's probably not worthwhile for you i don't think because i think it's very it, it's very us focused so that the cards are actually the credit cards and the the miles points so um Basically, we know of one non-US person who has been able to get the Chase card, the Chase Sapphire, Sapphire card. Mm -hmm. um, so we might look into that at some stage. But, um, yeah, it, that's amazing, that card, with the benefits that you get. You get that with one. The, they're the incredible. Key, key one to get. Yeah. The other um, thing that we have done, which has been really wise, is to get a Payoneer card. Um, and a Payoneer card is like a, a debit card. And it's used a lot by the subcontinent, so the Pakistanis and the Indians and stuff who work overseas um, or who, online. Who and don't get access to PayPal. Who can't get, yeah, PayPal payments. So they, it's like, how do they get paid? So a PayPal, um, a Payoneer card basically has money come into the account and then you can withdraw it from an, any ATM around the world. So that's been a lifesaver for us having a, a pioneer card. It's it again. It's probably not super required um, for US based people, but for non US based like Mira and us, and mm. um, it is actually 
quite a good system because uh, let's say Amazon, um, if we actually have our affiliate account set up through the Amazon US, um, we can actually get paid into, it's not officially a US bank account because it's actually this debit card, which is the Payoneer card. Um, but yeah, it, it allows us to get paid via the US system um, with this Payoneer card. So it's quite handy. Um, and for us, it's really good because it means we don't have to bring money into Australia. So for tax reasons, it's like the more money that comes into Australia, the more we have to pay tax um, because <laughs> we're deemed as non-residents here. Uh, so yeah, for us, it's sort of like keeping funds out of Australia is, uh, is on our radar for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and PayPal is not good enough because I'm just using PayPal now. PayPal's totally fine. PayPal's yeah, fine. yeah, PayPal's totally fine. Um, PayPal is is worldwide. It's just there are some countries. I think the Philippines and like Pakistan, Sri Lanka, whatever else, they struggle. Like they they can have a PayPal account, but they can't withdraw from PayPal to their local bank account. So they're kind of stuck. They've got this PayPal money, you know, but they can't they can't, they can't access it. Um, so that's where the Payoneer card has come in. It's helped them create a segue to go from PayPal into their hand because you can just use it in an ATM. It's really quite handy. Yeah. So speaking of ATMs around the world too, like, um, you know, the whole sort of banking system now is amazing to think that you can just take your, your everyday card, pop it in a machine and you get the local currency. I mean, that still blows my <laughs> mind. Uh, you know, my, my first lot of traveling happened uh, in my twenties where you, where it was pre Euro. So every country you went to between, you know, France and Germany and Greece and Italy and Austria, you had all these different currencies and it's like, Oh, how am I going to carry my, my shillings and my, my Zloty and my, my drachma and my francs <laughs> like flicking through all this currency. So now it's just totally amazing. You just like pop in your card and get out the local Euro or whatever it may be. <laughs> Definitely easier these days. That's it. <laughs> All right, well, that's brought us to the hour. I think we might um, finish up there. And Camille, if you if you can unmute and chat and let us know at least where you're coming from. Um, and we'll get this recording out to everyone. And uh, if anyone is around for the next session, I know it's quite bright and early. Uh, I think it's okay for the East Coast. It's 7 a.m. it'll be, but uh, that'll be about, what, 10 hours from now. Come and join us again. Um, Camille, are you... I'll just try and unmute you to see. Have you got a microphone there? Oh, from Philly. Okay. No more. No, more. Okay. no worries. Alrighty. Cool. Very cool. Well, I hope that's been helpful. Yes, thank you. Yes. Uh, I need well. notes. Oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> we covered lots of different topics. That's awesome. <laughs> we did. We kind of went boom straight through. So, um, yeah, well, See you in the location, Indie World or Paradise Pack World, where we'll probably cross paths somewhere. Like yeah. that. Um, and feel free to come over and have a look at House and Academy, see if it, if it resonates or not. Um, we're, we're coming up on, a, on our fourth birthday, as I mentioned, so uh, we might have a, a few little special things coming out. We've got a, a, we've got a, um, a really good program uh, that's kind of like taken out of the Academy. It's a, a lower priced program called the Set Up to Stand Out Kit that helps you set up a really good profile to make you stand out. So uh, we'll, we'll mention that as well. But um, Nadine, if you have, you know, if you want any other advice on uh, house sitting or anything, just yeah. give us a shout. But yeah, otherwise, if you feel like joining the, the house sitting tribe and hanging out, you're more than welcome to come into the lifetime membership of the Academy. And if not, maybe we can help you out with the setup standout kit and look forward to bringing some more stuff into the roaming income club as well. So once we yeah. get that blog interview done, um, yeah, and next month or two, we're going to be adding stuff to the roaming <laughs> income club. We actually had this awesome, amazing tutorial, tutorial type interview about how to write your book really fast. And that, Delivered. <laughs> oh, we don't have it anymore. So we're gonna have to find our friend and say, "Can you please come back for another session?" <laughs> I'm dreading that phone call to uh, ask if she'd do it again. Yeah, yeah. But, yes. she's a... but if you still have the computer, you can just get it back from your computer. Uh, I've deleted it from the trash. I was trying to clean up my. Computer. Yes, but you can get it back from the trash also. You just need someone who is really good with computers and you can get that everything. 
You can get uh, like if you deleted five years ago. Uh, okay. Well, it would depend if it's been overridden or not. Yeah, we've got a friend that's up the road who's a wizard. Yeah, there's special software that can go and help and find um, things yeah. that are lost. Or even they could, right. they may not be able to recover all of it, but they might be recover part of it. But yeah, yeah. To a degree, I think we're just meant to do it again. Because I actually did, I, I found the software and I, I went through and I found, and I think it was, I can't remember what it was going to cost to get it retrieved. It was some, because you had to pay for the software. The software was really great. It found it. And then it's like, okay, now if you want it back, it'll be this much. <laughs> it's like, oh, we'll check with our friend. He's a bit of a whiz on computers. He's yeah. uh, a bit of a, a nerd. So, uh, We'll see if we can do it. But if but not, the, we will record again because it was a good session. The content itself was cool because, um, yeah, she's created this process. Um, you know, she truly believes that there's a book inside of everybody. So she's created this process uh, to be able to draw that book out of you in, like, next to no time. Um, get it written. Get it even just get it up onto Kindle, like the, the whole kind of, you know, getting your book onto Amazon. Uh, and if anyone has read or looked at anything with regards to authority or, you know, growing your business, um, one of the best business cards is to have your own book. Yeah. And um, if you are unaware, Jason, Jason Moore uh, did that for us. He actually looked at our House in the Academy course. He loved that we had the 10C confidence and competency system. He said, well, if you've got the 10C confidence and competency system, that's pretty much... 10 chapters of a book. Let's just, you know, do a brief on that. So our international house sitting book that's on Amazon is actually published by Jason, mm. um, Zero to Travel. And yeah, and it's just been the sort of the, the extract from the full academy course, um, which is amazing. So we actually have a book. It's like, oh my God, <laughs> we never even wrote it. <laughs> no, we never wrote it. No. Yeah. <laughs> <Got a lot laughs> <of that. laughs> because I don't like writing. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. All right. Thanks, ladies. Um, All right. We'll get going. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And uh, yeah, go to bed, Mira. It's like 3 a.m. <laughs> is it? It's like ridiculous. Sun will be coming, coming up. up. <laughs> go to bed before sun comes up. Yes. Actually, it's coming up. It's already <laughs> not dark anymore. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> and all the best with the, with the birth in the next month. Yes. How exciting. Thank you. Are you having another girl or you don't know? Of or? course. Of course. <laughs> I eat a lot of lemons, so I can only have girls. <laughs> I haven't heard that one. <laughs> I didn't know that was related. There you go. It's <laughs> very cool. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, ladies. Alrighty. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome.